do you ever feel impotent? Well, I don't mean sexually. I mean, that's not the viewer, general viewing, but I mean politically. And when I say politically, I don't mean big P necessarily. I don't mean just politicians. I mean people in power, you know. What do we, the common folk, do to overcome our impotence? Well, the first thing we do is laugh. And in every culture all over the world, if we can laugh, we, have, we regain power. Now, one of the most powerful forms of regaining power, and the most possibly savage, is satire. Whether it's word, or image, or acting, or dance, all the arts, through the arts, do we regain our power. Doesn't matter which form, but satire, the putting down of. I've got a guy here who's a really interesting fellow because he's one of our local putter-downers, a very traditional satirist. Traditional because he's in the fine tradition of Goya, Daumier, the great artists who have pricked society's bubbles. And I want you to meet Josh Rattel. Hi, Josh. Hi, George. How are you? All right. How did you get into this? I suppose I can go back as far as grade school when I would entertain my friends with uh, the idea of drawing for them and putting down the people in power then, uh, teachers, principals, and uh, other figures of authority, and just getting laughs out of, uh, out of them by, uh, by putting them down to a more common pig. In the process, uh, do you have I mean, you've got to come up with the ideas. You've got to come up with a regular cartoon. What, where do you come from? Can you tell me that? I mean, do you come from a direction or? Uh, I don't really know if I do or not. Uh, you know, if I spend too much time thinking of uh, what are the sources of uh, inspiration or the sources of my own uh, view of things, uh, I think maybe you end up too navel gazing too much and, right. uh, and, and it's maybe self-defeating because it's, it's not going to provide you with any more material, it's not going to prov provide you with, with, uh, with better, better material, better cartoons, but at the same time I think it's important now and then to be self-reflective and uh, uh, if, in, if the sense that you mean is that you reflect what you think about certain things and why you think about why you, why you feel the way you do, uh, I do that. Uh, in fact, I don't do that on my own necessarily. My wife is an excellent foil for that because she's a challenging personality. She's one who, who will question my views on something and then it will force me to, to uh, reevaluate. Um, where I come from, though, I mean, everybody is a product of his or her own backgrounds and, and the, uh, the, the founding uh, influences that you have. So. Uh, I'm not that different from anybody else. When I look at your cartoons, the thing that strikes me very strongly is your fierce attack on injustices. That, that seems to be the constant. Well, I, that's, well, I guess that's a constant too throughout uh, human existence and so-called civilization, the so-called veneer that we have of civilization, where injustice has been uh, something that's uh, uh, natural to the human condition. And the thing is, when you have injustice, you're going to have many more victims than you are going to have perpetrators. And naturally, sympathies, not that I am a, a, a victim myself, I, I, I don't see myself as a victim, but I don't see myself either as a, as a, a victimizer. And as such, I, my identification would be with those who do suffer in society. Josh, it, 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 it must be quite difficult for you uh, with the, 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 particularly, I mean, you, you're dealing very much with the political figures, the elected political mm -hmm. figures, both nationally and provincially and municipally, with people like Elsie Wayne, for example. Um, it, it, one of the frightening things about government is the shifts, the moves. Um, how do you cope with these sudden rises of popularity of people and their demise? Well, coping with them, uh, I suppose from my point of view uh, as a cartoonist, if there are these great shifts and these changes, it just provides more fodder for me to, to, uh, to react to and, and do my work. That's, that's my narrow personal uh, view on that. I mean, 
It's like saying that if everything suddenly got benign in this world, I'd be out of a job. Yeah. Uh, so um, I to hope that things do get better. I know that they won't get better, or they'd marginally get better, but uh, there's still enough things that are going on that will provide uh, the kinds of uh, material for me to, to, to forever do work. Um, it's just like a, a principal, if, if he can, in a, in a school, if, if he or she can, uh, uh, can have something functioning in that school environment whereby their work is no longer necessary. What is the work of the principal? They're not in the trenches, they're not dealing with the, uh, the youngsters. Uh, uh, so no matter what they do, I think there always will be uh, problems to deal with. Yeah. You, you, to me, when I look at your work, one of the people that I felt you had absolutely summed up to a T was Kim Campbell. I thought your drawings of Kim Campbell were absolutely superb. What a pity you lost her. <laughs> yeah, I, I think from many points of view, it's a shame that we lost her because uh, uh, she was quixotic and, and she was uh, uh, a fresh face. She had interesting ideas and intellectual uh, breadth to her. And uh, it's a shame that we lost her. I don't know if Canada is the poor for it or not. We have, uh, in a sense, uh, a happy, plodding Jean Chrétien in place. Uh, and I think he's a, he's a good man, perhaps, to have after the excesses of, of Brian Mulroney. Uh, I, I miss her, too, from the point of view of, of um, because it's not somebody whom you could anticipate, or who you can, who, who's, whose antics you can anticipate. Kim Campbell's Denise, um, uh, political analyst to decide whether or not it, the loss of Kim Campbell is a loss to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I'm going to ask you a, a quite a tricky question now, um, but I think this is something that people find absolutely fascinating. I'm going to throw you a supposition. Supposing by some remote chance you and I formed an artist party and we got elected, all right? I suddenly become Premier of the province of New Brunswick. I apologize, Mr. McKenna. Uh, I'm a very common type. I mean, you and I actually don't look unalike. We've both got graying beards, we've both got dark glasses, we've got hair that doesn't control itself. We're both in power. What do you pick in me that would make me able, enable you to satirize me? Well, I don't know you well enough, George, yet, uh, <laughs> and we would know you by your actions, perhaps. Uh, I, I, so that's very important, is it? I think it's extremely important. You touched on it there, and that uh, I, essentially my art or my cartooning is, is it's a reactive type of thing. Uh, I'm not proactive, uh, other than maybe just in general terms when I'm not dealing with individual personalities who are enacting laws or doing things that will affect everybody else. But essentially, I'm sitting back waiting for someone to make a decision and take an action, and then it's my reaction to their decision that I will then hold up the mirror to or express my opinion on, which sometimes reflects what the masses of people feel out there. I mean, you, you mentioned before about uh, those who, who are powerless in society and it's a chance uh, to, uh, to, to, to circumvent or, or to overcome your, your impotence at what happens to you in society. Uh, so I, I, uh, I can vent the feelings of people who, who, who are, if not victims is too strong a word in this case, but those who are... Uh, the, the, the subjects of decisions, of political decisions that, uh, that will affect uh, society in general. I mean, this, we react to debt crisis, we react to, uh, to uh, mismanagement. Uh, I mean, each of us toils uh, to, to, to earn a living and, and you see things happening about you where phenomenal wastes occur both in, in uh, finances and also in, in, in human lives. That. Uh, we can shake our heads at, but we are powerless to do much about it. Every four years or so, we get a chance to uh, be the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the ballot box, where we think we have uh, our say. We do. We have uh, an equal say to anybody else who drops a ballot into that box. And uh, that's, that happens, though, uh, you know, in, in, with, at the great intervals of, of uh, democratic process. Yes. Uh, but in between, we are back to our... Uh, Caspar milk toast. And, uh, 
Um, one of the, the qualities of your work, if I can say this, I find you very courageous. I mean, you, you'll take risks in your drawing. I mean, you, you know, the, the use of phallic symbolism, for, some, for instance, which you, you do. I mean, it's in several of your cartoons up there. Uh, you're not afraid to criticize whole sacred cows. Mm. Um, do you ever get kicked back? Well, part of the problem right now is that I'm not working for a particular paper. I syndicate my work, and when I send it out, it's up to the individual paper that receives it, whether they'll use it or not. When I was with the Telegraph Journal, uh, of course, there was a decision makers uh, over what would appear in the newspaper and if I did a cartoon which uh, employed certain symbolism or, uh, or references that uh, they are able to divine sometimes they weren't <laughs> either was too obscure or their uh, their knowledge of uh, <laughs> of symbolism was was uh, was weak uh, if they rec recognized it for what it was they would take a step back and say, well, this is a family newspaper, we can't do this, we mustn't do that. So when you say that I'm courageous, uh, there's no courage really in, in doing something in this general democratic society where somebody else is deciding what's going to appear in the paper. Now if I were in a totalitarian regime and I were doing cartoons that were critical of the leader or leaders and uh, there were a free paper that could uh, express those or carry those things, then, and if my life were in danger, then that's a courageous act. But in a generally free society like we are in, for me to do a cartoon which, uh, which, which takes strong uh, views of, of, uh, and reflects it in, in an individual, um, it, it may not appear in that paper, in which case uh, it doesn't have the effect that it has when it's hanging on a wall in, in an exhibit. Yeah, yeah. D d do you, d d most of your cartoons use wit and, uh, and humor uh, to, to prod mm -hmm. your, your victims, mm -hmm. can we call them? Um, do you ever do any serious cartoons in the sense of taking issues like, say, Biafra or, or, or but would you approach that by by nailing through through wit. Okay, that's that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I guess when I look at other cartoonists' work in Canada, I'll, I'll restrict it to to Cana Canadian work. Uh, I, I think I would fall more into the category of uh, of, of a statement or opinion rather than looking for a gag in, a, in an issue in, a, in a, an editorial issue. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have enough wit to be able to uh, to. to carry that message, but I, I think the gag aspect of commenting on, on, uh, on, on social issues uh, is, the weaker, is the weaker statement. Uh, I think if you can employ maybe black humor or if you can uh, show something graphically in a harsh manner that really makes people sit up and take a second thought about what, what's happening, I think that's the stronger statement. Now, I guess that's my bent or where I may be coming from in that regard. Uh, I'm, I'm losing a bit of, of train of what you were asking me with regard to, to uh, the humor in a situation. Mm. I don't know if I'm getting away from your question or not. Well, don't worry, because mm. it, I, I, we've only got a couple more minutes, and there's, there's other things I, I really want to ask you. For, for example, of your work, do you have certain pieces which, which you feel, I'm really proud of that one? Uh, I'd be hard put really to answer uh, and to refer specifically to, to one or two like that off, offhand. I'd maybe want more time to think about it. Uh, I, I think a, a trite statement is that you're only as good as your next cartoon, not as your last one, and uh, because the challenge is always there to renew yourself and to come up with something fresh. Uh, it's very hard to get away from uh, the visual cliché from something that someone else has done in some other way, although even though it's relevant to a new situation, you're still going to employ some, some uh, uh, relativistic uh, information or, or uh, you're going to hearken back to someone else's uh, view on things. I'm just thinking recently of a cartoon in the Globe and Mail where uh, 
the overpopulation issue and in, in, in the projections for the next century, uh, I mean, it's a horrendous problem that we'll be facing in this world. And uh, the famous creation of Adam from Michelangelo, yes. uh, where God is reaching out with his finger to touch Adam. Well, he used that image. I've used it myself in other times. And what you had there was a multiplicity of atoms. You had maybe 15 atoms crowding the bottom, reaching out to touch. And you can see God sort of pulling back and wondering whether he should actually make that electric touch or not. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, that's what I mean when, when a, an artist uh, or cartoonist is going to use uh, imagery from the past to, uh, to in a renewed way, but it's borrowing from someone else's vision. Josh, we come to the end of the interview. I'm sorry, I, I could go on for ages. There's so much I want to ask you, but thank you very much. It's well, been fascinating. It's my pleasure. <laughs> we just got It's a beautiful spring day. There's just enough cloud to make the sky attractive. There's enough blue to make the river blue. And we're at the village of Gagetown. Now, Gagetown, if you know it, is one of the more attractive places on the St. John River. And they make an awful effort to make themselves even more attractive. It's always been a center of the arts, of the crafts anyway here. Pat Jenkins set her weaving studio up here oh, many, many years ago. Flo Gregg has her pottery. Uh, Aileen and Kathy Coombs produce enamels and batiks. And there's artists, photographers, all sorts of people around here. Now, very recently, uh, last couple of years, the Acacia Gallery has opened. And as part of the Apple Blossom Festival, which is Blocked off Main Street along here, there's boats, there's tractors, there's all sorts of interesting things along the street. But the Acacia are having their summer opening. And Fundy Cable, which puts its money where its mouth is, doesn't just do programs like this on the arts. They help fund, and they're one of the sponsors of the exhibitions at the Acacia Gallery. So let's go over and see what's over there. We're in the Acacia Gallery, uh, which is a charming little wooden building, far bigger inside than what you would imagine from the outside. It's right next door to the Steamer Stop Inn. And I'm overwhelmed by the lovely stuff on show here. Uh, it is a, a commercial gallery, and that means they sell pictures but they've got a very broad range of artists here and I'm going to find out from Richard Flynn, the owner, what, how he manages to attract the artists of the calibre that he shows in this gallery. So let's go over and meet Richard. Richard, you've got a very, very attractive little gallery here. Well, thank you. And beautiful, beautiful works. Um, how do you manage to get the artists of the caliber that you've got to show in Gagetown? Um, well, I think that was a lucky thing because uh, um, what the way the whole thing started was uh, uh, Vic and Vic Stewart came across Vic and Pat Stewart owned the Steamer Stop Hotel just across uh, the way, and they own this building, and they came to me. And, they, uh, and asked if I was interested in, in turning the place into an art gallery. And it's something I'd never ever considered running an art gallery. And immediately I said, no way, you know. But then I realized that, that I knew um, so many people. And if I brought all of those people together, um, that it would, that it may be possible, and it was just something I was throwing in, around in my mind for about a day. It didn't take longer than a day to realise that it could be possible. And um, and then the the thing was having someone to actually run the gallery, mm. to organise things, and, and that's that's a hard part because I don't think many people can actually do this. And uh, I thought of uh, Heather Thorne, who was doing my framing at the time, and I asked her if she was interested. And she was, and the ideas between between us, once because she knew more people as well, 
and we just brought these people together for a show last year and realised that we had something very special. And we're all, we also realised that there was so much uh, talent in New Brunswick that is, um, um, not saying, uh, uh, it, it needs to be, it, it, everywhere, anywhere you go, it needs to be pulled together. We realised that we could pull this together and, and probably have something special here. Well, I think the thing that impresses me so much is that you've got very high calibre artists, um, not artists that, uh, there's no compromising with the work. I mean, they, they're not compromising and producing for, for a tour, tourist market or anything like that, yeah. but they're extremely livable pictures. Yeah. You know, they're pictures that anyone could buy and That's live right. with. That's right. Even the more extreme artists, you know, the people that just have something to say, like Pat Shell, who yeah. has a very definite message in her work, or Carol Taylor. It's because, it's, it's, if you get to know these people, um, they're all, well, it's great to get to know them. You know, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's really exciting to go into a studio and see how they work. Um, and you, uh, and you see how, and you see that uh, the way they feel about their work, it's, so, it's such a genuine feeling that they have, you know, about producing things. And they do it, they don't do it for a market, really, rather than to, for some sort of fulfillment in themselves. To, <laughs> and and the, they know each other, and they really, they really like each other. There's a, it, there's a love between them, you know, there's a real genuine sort of, uh, affection for e for each other, and and, um, and and they're influenced by each other. And I think when you get something like that going, it's been proved in in the history of art. When you get something like th like that going, um, you can achieve great things. It's not you can't do much when you're just one person on your own. You need to be, have a few people together to. Uh, Really now, pull it off. now the gallery isn't the only thing you do here, though, in the summer, is it? I mean, you have workshops and all sorts of things going on. Well, <laughs> what do you got lined up for this summer, for instance? Yeah, we have Herzl Kaszewski, um this month. Uh, um, he has a workshop. I think it's the 18th of um, the 18th of this month. I think oh, it's, really? That's and what's he going to be doing? Um, he's, it's a it's a watercolor workshop using the area um, as, a, as an inspiration. And we have a place, which is a really beautiful place to work, just across the river, um, where people can come and, uh, and use as a base and, and have the best, um, the best scenery that you could possibly imagine. Oh, it's incredibly beautiful yeah. down here, isn't it? It is. Incredibly really. beautiful. The wildlife is something really exceptional. Yes. I don't know, you're a Brit, or an original Brit too. Didn't you find that one of the most remarkable things about Canada, or New Brunswick, were the birds? Yeah. I'm just overwhelmed with the beauty of the birds here. It's funny you should say that, because I'm, I've been interested in that all my life. And that's probably how I... S a lot of artists start by drawing birds, you know? I don't know. Uh, that's what I've discovered. When you, when you get to know an artist, uh, he's, he's got an interest in ornithology sometimes. Um, but anyway, that's the way I started, and I came here, and I see ospreys all over the place. Yes. And I think of my friend who was an artist in Britain, who spent two weeks um, on the night shift. It, With a gun. <laughs> yeah, on, on the night shift, guarding, it, guarding an osprey's nest, you know, up in Scotland, where, where they're so, so rare. And he, he volunteered his services to go and watch this. Watch this nest, you know. And we have them all over we here, have them don't? all over the place. And, Plus and the bald what, eagles. Ba bald eagles. Um, I saw a, a crane last year flying around here. Really? Yeah. Uh, um, a red. Oh, what's the name of it? So much for me, on oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you do as an artist? Sandhill crane. You're a painter. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, that's what I... I didn't want this to influence my work. I didn't want it to affect my work. That's why um, I really need to spend most of my time working. So I need to have that look after the gallery. And I need to get involved in, in producing work. So you do keep on with your own work. I noticed yeah, two of your paintings here. Yeah. 
Um, I, I, it, it isn't really. I don't let it really affect my work. You know, apart from having this day off when I could, when I could be out there, and it's a lovely day. Yes. So the odd days you do lose, but you need to lose odd days. You can't work every day anyway. You know, no. you need to have other interests and get get involved in other things anyway. Yeah. But it enriches your what you do do, doesn't it? That's right. Richard, very best of luck. Now Thanks this is much. your second season, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, the second season. I hope it's as good as last year. Well, the really number well. of people you've got here today, it looks it's a good opening. Yeah, so, it's been well, best of luck. Have a good summer. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheryl Bogart is a local artist. She she's, lives in Gemsaker community. Oh, what, just a few miles away? Yes, just across the river. Cheryl, what's it meant to have an art gallery in your local surroundings? Oh, well, that's, it's great. It's great. It gives me and a lot of other people uh, exposure. I think it's a wonderful gallery. Isn't it? Isn't it attractive? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I, I love your work. I really do. I'm oh, not being you. flattering. I, I really do. Okay. It's my type of work because your pi I'm an illustrator, mm -hmm. and your pictures tell stories. Yes, they do. Are they local stories? Are they real stories? Or are they what? Stories? No, not local stories. Um, a bit of that, but a lot of it just comes from inside me. They're, they're memories. A lot of them are memories really? that I have, yes. yes. You, you, where, where did you train? Uh, I'm self-taught. You are? Yes. I'm absolutely staggered. You're drawing your sense of detail. It's so skilled. It's lovely Thank you work. Very much. And this one here, I'm going to back you up a yes, little bit. Sir. This one I absolutely love. Thank you. Is that a memory? No, it's it's a combination. That this is an actual house. There was an auction held there. Uh, this is a lady that I do know. She didn't live in this house. It wasn't her auction, but she's a. Uh, oh my, she must be in her 90s now, and she's a, a very spirited, tough lady who's been through a lot. I ad I admire her. These some of these things are from my memory. The scene around it is, and. Uh, they it's a combination, actually, of actual things and... You have a very, memory. very sharp eye. You really see detail, don't you? I mean, these leaves are, are delightful. I enjoy thing. doing that kind of work. Mm. Well, I, I, I do... Have you exhibited much other than here? Not, not a lot. I have exhibited uh, uh, with some other people in group shows uh, at the Ring Gallery and... Uh, I was in the McCain competition a couple of times. Oh, yes. Yes. And uh, that was really nice, so my things hung at the Beaver Book. For a while. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm also uh, at uh, Gallery 21 in Halifax. And, uh, oh, so your work I, I is have, getting round. Oh, yes, yeah, getting round. Mm. But I'm kind of a shy person. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer just to stay home and paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. keep going. The work's lovely, well, and thank, thank you. you so much for talking to us. Thank you. The New Brunswick Community Television Archive, exploring New Brunswick's history of community television programming, is an educational initiative of CHCO-TV.